So here's the here's the glitch. Here's the glitch. You go to balloon. You go off the balloon. This works in any form of flying. When you do the hover thing, you can do it from ship or balloon. So the goal is, just like in hovering, like I explained in my previous video, you want to start hovering like this. So when you hover like that, what your goal is to do is to open your grenade menu and look up. But you don't want to just look up in the air. You want to hold your grenade menu and keep looking up. Just keep moving your mouse up. Keep moving your mouse up. Do not stop moving your mouse upwards. And if you hold your grenade menu, which is 5 for me, it's G by default. You hold G or 5 or whatever it's bound to, you keep moving your mouse upwards. Every stroke you move it up, you will get a slight boost. I'm kidding. A fuck, a massive boost up in the air. You can also do this by not moving your mouse just as much to make sure that you can move in horizontal. Like, instead of just vertical directions, you can move in more diagonal directions to travel across the map as well. But here's what it looks like when you do it. You fly, hover, hold five, look up. And I'm up in the sky. And I can probably do this for the rest of the game and get a win like this. Uh, so what I'm going to do for the sake of the video is probably keep flying around and see how long I can live and then give the win to the last person. Here you see I locked my camera by holding the menu in a diagonal way to make sure that I could travel further across the map. This is also possible to do in more horizontal angles like this. Thank you for the prime. And let's say, oh, you know, I want to travel over there or something. Let's see if I can pop my, my hover. Oh, it glitched. I got to look up a little bit more. I fucked it up. But the key is in continuously moving your mouse upwards. Don't you look in the direction you want. You hold your grenade button and then spam a mouse up. You spam a mouse up. Does it work to go faster down? That is a good question, actually. Let's try it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it works to go faster down. Yes, it does. Respawn, fix this. This is not acceptable in the game. I have no idea why this happens. I understand each step of the process to make it happen now. But this is not... Okay, this needs to be hot fixed as soon as possible. I do not support mechanics like these, and I know I supported double pump in the beginning. After using double pump for a while, I know that that is fucking... That is dumb, too. I totally understand. I'm just toxic and salty. I'm just I'm just a fucking crybaby about shotguns, okay? Peacekeeper, peace from But this, just like the Peacekeeper exploit, this needs to be fixed. Respawn, please fix. I guess you can also just hold your menu to delay your falling speed by a lot. Like I'm doing right here. So provided, this is also useful because you can go faster down. So if you're going from a dropship and you get close to a cliff, you hold down the grenade key and look downwards, it will move you down towards the ground faster. Alright boys, let's pick a fight. And you guys are going to get to pick which fight I go suicide to so I don't win the game by just expl exploiting. Do you have to be in hover mode? Yes. That's when your mouse inputs dictates your movement speed. So basically you can get super fast to the ground. Yes, you can touch the ground faster. So I can show it right here. Let's say I'm dropping from the ship, you know, I'm gonna go down here towards the balloon. I start my hover right here. Oh shit, I went a little bit too far. Uh, dude, this is the same thing as just f fucking typing no clip and, and oh no. The same thing as typing no clip in console with an SV cheat server in CS. Same engine and everything, but here you just fly. This is stupid. Please fix this. Also, please don't ban me, respawn. I'm not doing this to win games. I'm doing it to showcase it, give it exposure, and hopefully fix it fast. Uh, I'm going to do a video today showing some tricks on my stream and also showing my launch settings all in detail, as well as how to make an auto execute, what I put in my auto execute, the animation cancel basically. Uh, when jumping from high, like kicking the ground, but the timing of it, and I'll show you. As I said, I'll show the hover thing. I will show you my launch options and how to set up and make an auto execute. How do you see if it's player drop? See these blue circles on the map right here? That means it's random. See the blue line? That means we can pick it up. So th that means our, those are random drops. If you see a blue drop early as it's coming down a line and it disappears, it's a player drop. And if you don't see the blue circles when it's appearing, it's a player drop. Yo, okay. So if you have a Kraber, or if you have a Mastiff, you see I have four shots in mag, 16, well, four, sh whatever, 416. I shoot two bullets, I reload, I have 414. I swap my slot back to 416. You can have infinite ammo with legendary weapon. When you're in queue, when you're in queue, the jump master icon defaults to the third player. 
But if Moon picks his character through auto-selecting, that means not clicking the character and locking in. And if he just lets it run out without selecting a character, it'll pick his most recent pick character, but it won't give him Jump Master anymore. It'll give Jump Master to the person that picked his character, like by clicking, or randomizing it between the two that did. So if he clicked it, he'll get Jump Master. If he didn't click on his character to lock it in, it'll give it to someone else. So that way, if he's BRB or AFK, he's not the one that drops. Big brain from respawn. I like that. Okay, this is cool. If you're a Wraith, and you're grappling, and you're like, fuck, I'm getting shot at. I want to go all the way over there. You can face while still on the grappling. It's really useful sometimes. Especially getting shot at a balloon and shit. Someone aimed at me. That's Pog. Wingman. Like some of the other pistols. Your first shot... Is 100% accurate towards the middle. The only reason I'm changing like where I am is because of the, the crosshair moving. But the very first shot of your wingman is accurate. Also here, if you're playing in bunker, you've probably seen this already. You can go up there. You can stand on it. You can also, if someone's blocking a door... Oh, I blew this up. You can kick the door either to open it or to break it. Let me show you guys how to do the hover thing. Let me show you guys how to do the hover thing when you go off a balloon. Let me go to that balloon over there. So I'm so far away. The way... The way it works is... You want to look straight up in the sky. And then you want to free look around and try to fly in towards mountains or walls or buildings or high hills. Because that animation when you start flying that will send you upwards and get more airtime is an animation that gets triggered when you're close to like terrain, when you're close to a mountain or a building or a wall. So my goal is to try to maintain my height in the air as much as possible by looking up and touching things that are like, you know, like getting close to them, try to fly towards them. So I'm going to look straight up, fly forward, and then kind of use my A and D key to steer, like steer myself into touching something like this. Like I fall close to the mountain or the cliff or whatever, and then I do it again, it triggers again, and then I fly towards low ground, back towards high ground, towards low ground, Back towards high ground. To get as much time in the air as I possibly can. So the best way to, to do it is definitely like learning specific like routes to like where how you go back and forth to maximize the distance. Just trying different things. Uh, because since all the balloons are in set locations, it's pretty useful knowing exactly what to do to go as far as you possibly can. You can do this when you're landing though. So if you look straight up and get some more air time. So here we go. I'm going to go forward again. Gonna try to touch this cliff, or, get, or not touch it, but get close enough to it to trigger it. Then I go towards the side, I change my direction, fly towards this one. Trigger it again, fly towards the next one, which would be probably over here. And do it one more time towards the cliff, maybe. And now I'm gonna touch the ground. But I almost got all the way here, which is a lot further than just doing it normally. Do you need to hold W to go up? Yeah, you hold W the entire way. So you look up, you just go forward. You can also jump off. And mid-air, just before touching the ground, you can kick. And that way, you can run immediately after landing. Otherwise, if you land from high, like if you land from far up, like right here, if you jump off, you land on the ground, it's going to play an animation that's going to prevent you from walking or running when you land. But if you just before touching the ground, if you do it just before touching the ground, and you kick the, the air, you kick the air towards the ground like this, you can immediately start running. At least immediately start walking and then start your sprint animation after the running animation. I will, sh I will show you how I set up my auto execute and how I get my FPS to be uncapped, how I like all my, my performance based commands, all my settings and stuff like that that you can change in the game. So let me find where the fuck I installed Apex because, okay, I got it. Here is my, my program files, play Apex, Apex and CFG folder. You will have a, a file called config default PC CFG. So what I do is I copy that and I paste it. And then I, I, I change the name to auto execute, auto exec. It's, don't put the one there. This is just because I already have one. And then I open it with notepad or notepad plus plus, and it should look like this. All this stuff, just remove it, okay? You remove all that stuff. These are the things that are in my auto execute. I have seal underscore force preload zero. You can try putting it at one, but it probably won't help you because this is a bad command to have. I have FPS max zero, which uncaps my FPS so I can have unlimited FPS. And I want. I, I want 240 FPS and above because I'm playing on a 240Hz monitor. I have Ragdoll Collide and Matte Compressed Textures 1. These settings, I will have them in the description, these three settings that you want in your auto execute. 
You can also put other things in Yager Execute, like the normal commands you put in your launch options. The way to access your launch options is that you, oops, you go on your game library, you click on the game, press the cogwheel, press game properties, and then advanced launch options. All of these things here, make sure you, you put in plus exec space auto exec. This means that when the game launches, it will read your auto execute file, which would be this, and actually read it and put uh, uh, enable the settings in the game. Jesus Christ, I can't talk. In here, you probably want to remove dash high. You don't want to use that. But all these are the things. Um, so you don't need that either. You don't need either of these. So all these things, I'll put them in the description as well. So I have these. Don't need console either. It doesn't work. These things. Plus seal underscore show FPS 4. You can try 1, 2, 3, 4. They will show differently. Um, I can post them in the chat as well, yes. 1, 2, 3, 4 will show differently. This is the white text on the bottom le uh, top left of my screen when I'm playing. My editor will show you. Uh, probably just fucking highlight part of the game. And it's the top left. Full screen just means that you play the game in full screen. No vid disables the, the launch video. So when you launch the game, there's a video that plays. This disables that. Dash force, no vsync. Make sure that you don't have any vsync on. But you have to, if you want to use an auto execute, uh, auto execute, you have to have this in here. The plus x like auto exec. And then you save it. And then you just save this too as well. Make sure that it's called auto exec.cfg. I prepared a text file so you guys can read it easier. But it would still just look like this for me. This is what it looks like, my auto execute. Uh, I don't want that enabled, actually. I'm going to turn that off right now. Probably. I was, I, was, I was testing it yesterday, and 1 and 0, 1 will probably get you stuttering. Sometimes even really big stuttering. So you just don't want that. You can either not put it in, or just put a 0 there. Then you save it, and that's it. Uh, you can launch the game now. As long as you saved your, your launch options and, uh, under game properties and advanced launch options, and put this in, you can launch the game, and these settings in this folder will go live. Make sure it's a CFG file, though. Let me post these in the chat for you guys. There you go. Okay, now I go back to the game. What's auto execute? It's a folder that you put in. It's basically just telling the game what settings to enable or disable. So you can put a bunch of the console settings in there. So for instance, like the compressed textures one or FPS underscore max zero, I put that in my auto execute. And that tells the game that I want my game to be uncapped on its FPS. I don't want a limiter on my FPS. So you see in menus, I'm getting 1,300 FPS. I'm getting like 1,900, sometimes in some screens, even 3,000, 2,000. This is because the auto execute folder is telling the game, hey, I want these settings to be set in this specific way. But there's no, there's no FPS setting in video or gameplay or anything. So by putting that in there, you can uncap the FPS because you're telling the game to do it regardless of the setting not existing in the actual game. Is your command to change hertz? I, as I can't quite reach the consistent 144 on my PC. So if you don't have your window settings set to specific refresh rate, what you want to do is go in here, either in the auto execute or in game properties, and add slash refresh, or no, dash refresh, sorry. Dash is the fucking one line, isn't it? Minus refresh space and then the refresh rate you want. So that will set the game to that refresh rate. But as long as you're, you're your Windows monitored like hertz is set to 240 or 144. You don't need to put that in. 